Remember your childhood? Remember the Spider-Man you used to read about in comics? Remember the rush of emotions you would receive as you saw Spider-Man swing around the city? Remember how cool it was to play Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 2 or GameCube, rescuing balloons and stopping random crimes? This one game is your childhood come back to haunt you, in the best possible way. So, real talk, Spider-Man PS4 is easily the best interpretation of Spider-Man I've seen since The Spectacular Spider-Man, a kid's show. One of the best kid's shows. That's because Spider-Man PS4 doesn't try to ground the character in any way, it doesn't try to be a reimagining of the character or the mythos. It understands who the character is, it takes into account what has worked for the character before, and runs with it. It doesn't try to do anything different for the sake of being different, for better or worse. Spider-Man PS4 takes everything that works in the comics, TV and film, and manages to synthesize all of that into one incredible product with fantastic gameplay. While the gameplay is fresh and dynamic, and the visuals are absolutely fantastic, the story is one thing that Spider-Man PS4 had to ace. And they nailed it. Spider-Man PS4 is able to create an original story based on a multitude of comics and even films. All of the films. Even those that didn't work. That's right, they take cues from The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and make it work. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. The story contains a broke, struggling Peter Parker, like always, and I think this is something that should always be present in Peter's life, at least at times, most of the time. The story introduces the people around him that support him, and this all shows that Peter affects people's lives, and they affect his life as well. The story manages to show off how the people Peter knows rely on him and he relies on them, sometimes without them even knowing. Aunt May in this story is the absolute perfect incarnation of Aunt May. Not too cruel, not too happy, and skippy. Get that Ultimate Comics Aunt May out of here, this is the best Aunt May I've seen. One big reason why Spider-Man PS4 works is because it manages to make Spider-Man feel exactly like comic book Spider-Man, at least classic Spider-Man from the comics. This isn't super rich Spider-Man with a Spider-Mobile, this isn't cringy Spider-Man, this is perfect Spider-Man. I've been waiting for the perfect Spider-Man for years. It was very close with Raimi. Web Spider-Man was a, a failure. The closest we've seen is the John Watts Spider-Man. There are still some things that need to be fixed, but Spider-Man PS4 Spider-Man is Spider-Man. The game captures his sense of responsibility, which is something that I think should have been doubled down in Spider-Man Homecoming. I think if it would have, I believe it would have been the absolute best Spider-Man film. It wouldn't have been as much of a debate. Peter Parker has charm in the game, a way about him that's infectious, and you can tell he cares about people, whoever they may be. Spider-Man feels absolutely selfless in the game, with his internal monologuing and his constant banter between people like his boss and Captain Yuri and Mary Jane. It makes you care about the character, and it makes you care about what the character cares about. That makes side missions so entertaining and interesting. The game actually puts you in the seat of Spider-Man and instills a sense of responsibility within you from the get-go. Right from the opening cutscene, you see that even though Peter's napping all peacefully, there are things that are more important. Every time you see a random crime event pop up, and these things are random, you have a need to stop it in typical Spider-Man fashion. Even if you have some other mission that's way more important, this is like the story mission, the side quests, the random city events, feel incredibly important. Also, there's this little J. Jonah Jameson broadcast that plays a lot of the time you're swinging, which is hilarious to listen to, and it makes you want to prove him wrong, that you're not a menace and you are taking care of the city. And how are you supposed to take care of the city? Random crime events, side quests, it all works together in unison. Putting this Spider-Man, who, by the way, is incredibly smart and designs all his own tech, into this story, which is probably the best Spider-Man story since Spider-Man 2 or the spectacular Spider-Man TV show, rest in peace, is a blast to watch. The story is full of emotional beats and character dynamics and progression. Peter Parker and Mary Jane's relationship is the most interesting it's ever been. It's been about more than a decade since we've gotten a legitimately good Peter Parker Mary Jane story, and this game provides us with incredible writing, and best of all, actual maturity and realism. You don't think this has anything to do with Lee, do you? Sorry to cook and run. Did, did you just leave your clothes on the kitchen floor? Uh... 
These feel like real people in real scenarios. The characters act like people and look like people, making them feel like people. There's nothing weird about the animations or models. The facial capture is some of the best I've ever seen, and Mary Jane's face specifically is probably one of the best instances of motion and facial capture in a video game, which shows little quirks and emotions. Spider-Man's villains, or at least the main villains of the game, are also incredibly important in Peter's life, and he's not just there to beat them up, he wants to save them. That's what I believe makes Spider-Man, Spider-Man. It's a defining characteristic, and it's not like the movies have failed at this either, but the game does this also incredibly well. And even with your fight against Shocker, while most other games just treat Shocker as a common thug, in Spider-Man PS4, you're legitimately trying to help Shocker as the fight continues. The fact that Spider-Man is just a genuinely good person in the game makes you love playing as him. It feels joyous to be a hero. This scene for me completely captures the essence of what it means to be a hero, and Spider-Man is truly a hero in the game. Sorry, I just can't do what you do. All right, put him up. First thing, don't let the adrenaline get to you. Breathe slow, breathe deep, relax. Look for an opening. Boom. Like that? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Not only this time, just let me have it. Right on the job. Okay? I can do it. <clears throat> oh, sh... S sorry. No, no. No. <laughs> it's all good. The game feels like a personal story, which ultimately expands, and the fate of the entire city is in Spider-Man's hands. It feels very Web of Shadows, The Dark Knight Returns-ish, and pretty much playing as a man who's trying to resolve this problem pretty much on his own is incredibly, incredibly fun. And seeing how he has to rely on his allies and work as a team is also great. Like I said before, Peter's arc with Mary Jane is great, and it's easily one of the driving points of the game, with her wanting him to trust her more and Peter not wanting Mary Jane to get in harm's way. Miles Morales is also in the game, and his arc is very emotional and shows how the character copes with a tragic event. It's all very personal. The game is an incredibly personal game. Lastly, Spider-Man faces off with a supervillain at the end of the game, and it's easily one of the most intense battles I've ever played. Ever. And not necessarily intense because it's hard, but intense because of character conflict and the meaning behind the entire altercation. The music that plays throughout the scene is also phenomenal. John Paisano, or Paisano, is able to create a theme that masterfully weaves Danny Elfman's bombastic sounds with strings and saxophone, the late James Horner's chorus and light piano and bells, and even Hans Zimmer's amazing Spider-Man theme comes in a bit, especially around a scene around the end of the game with pretty much only piano and synth playing. All of it, all of it combined creates something that sounds exactly like Spider-Man should. It even sounds a bit John Williamsy at times. It's a lot of, a lot of inspiration. There's a lot of things that have inspired this soundtrack. And in this game, we are hit with a powerful moment which showcases the selflessness and sacrifice that Peter Parker embodies. And it's in this moment that you see truly the essence of Spider-Man, what makes him truly special as a hero, as an icon for children and adults alike. The game, like I said before, and I can't stop repeating this, is the perfect interpretation of Spider-Man. It's a mature Spider-Man whose essence has been ripped straight from the source material. It's an absolute blast to play, and its story keeps you so engaged that you don't want to stop playing, and you want to find out what'll happen next. Not every game is perfect, this game is definitely not perfect, but it is so close to perfection. Insomniac Games deserves an applause, as they've truly created something special here, and I remember watching Spider-Man 2 and grinning with joy because of what I was watching. I mean, when Spider-Man first appeared going to deliver pizzas, I was in heaven in that movie theater, and that feeling came back to me when I played this game. It's something incredible. And I thank all of those who worked on the game. Brian Horton, Brian Intiar, Marcus Smith, Ryan Smith, all of the programmers, writers, composers, modelers, riggers, lighters, UVers, every single person who brought Spider-Man and New York to life for this game. I thank you. If you haven't bought the game, buy the game. If you don't have a PS4, save up for one, because the PS4 exclusives that have been coming out have all been worth it. Spider-Man PS4 will most definitely pave the way for incredible Marvel video games, and I can't wait for Spider-Man 2.
So guys, just wanted to let you all know that I was recently demonetized by YouTube, and thankfully I was able to bring the channel back up and running incredibly quickly by going on Twitter and starting a huge scandal. Not really huge, it's actually kind of kind of small, but everyone who participated, thanks so much. It really means a lot. It was honestly amazing to see how many people were retweeting it, all these random YouTubers, all these YouTubers I know. I had no idea Cosmonaut Marcus followed me back. That's really cool. And I really do want to thank all my patrons. There's a bunch of people who've decided to support me in this channel, and I can't thank you enough. And this video is definitely dedicated to my patrons. Anyways, if you really liked the video and you're new, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of video essays and a lot of random other stuff. So thanks for coming to the table, and I'll see you all next time.